With 500 million active users and over 50%, that's 250 million of those active users actually logging into the site every single day, Facebook is an imperative site to be a part of, as we've touched on throughout Always Be Shipping. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can interact with Facebook when you're out and about. That is, how to stay in touch with your market via Facebook from your mobile device. Now, the most obvious way to do that is to simply load your Facebook fan page up in your mobile browser. And sure, that works, but it's going to be a pretty small page and it's going to be difficult to interact with. And as you can see here, this is a screenshot of my Facebook fan page loaded up in my mobile browser. It doesn't have the ability to upload photos and do that kinds of things. I can only post on my wall like a status update. So we'll just skip that as an option, although it is something that you can use if it's all that you've got. But we'll move on to some more effective ways to get content onto Facebook when you're away from your desktop. So the next most obvious choice would be to use the Facebook app for your mobile device. I'm going to show you a trick for getting to your page so that you can post to it that uh, while you're using the Facebook app. This took me like a year to discover. I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but I figure that if I'm somebody who wasn't able to figure it out that quickly, I'm sure that there are other folks out there who haven't figured it out too. And now that I know about this trick, it saved me so much time and it's made it so much easier to post to my page from my phone that I'm actually using that functionality a lot more often than I used to. And I mean, it, it kind of makes you think, aren't people funny that way? Just knowing in my head that, oh, it's going to take me like six taps to get to my Facebook fan page once I get into the Facebook app. That was enough to deter me from actually using it. And now that I know, based on what I'm going to show you in just a second, that it's only one tap to get to my fan page, I actually go and use it a lot more often. And really, that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about in this section of Module 6. It's not so much about how it's possible to be a market leader and create content while we're on the go, or it isn't even so much about that you need to be creating content while you're out and about, but it is the convenience and making it easy to create content based on whatever you have at hand. And we're not always sitting at our desk. And sometimes even when I'm at my desk, I'll still use my phone to post something quickly so that I don't interrupt the workflow that's going on at my desk. So it isn't, again, this isn't about, you know, running around town picking up dry cleaning and dropping kids off at school and going grocery shopping and creating massive amounts of content while you're doing that. But it's about creating a system that you can use either in your off time, your downtime, or when you do happen to be out and about to get that content out there constantly so that you aren't chained to your desk. So back to the Facebook app trick. Here's a screenshot of the Facebook app's home screen. Now there's a little plus sign in the upper right hand corner. And if you tap that, you'll be brought to a page with a list of all your friends. Now at the bottom of that page is a little nav bar and it says friends and then it says pages. So tap pages and then you'll see a list of the fan pages that you're an administrator of and then below that you'll see a list of the pages that you are personally a fan of. So you're going to select your fan page from that list and then once you do that you'll get your fan pages profile photo listed on your home screen and it'll look like this. There's my profile picture from my Facebook fan page on my Facebook apps home screen. So now when you open the Facebook app, you only have to click your fan page icon and then you're brought right there where you can then upload pictures or update statuses or interact with posts that you made previously in the comments. Now again, as simple as this may sound, it made such a huge difference for me in my ability to quickly interact with my fan page when I'm not at my desk. It made a big, big difference and it will for you too. We just want to remove as many barriers to creating content as possible. And this is one small barrier that you'll never have to climb again. And if you don't have a big fancy pants smartphone with the Facebook app, and I didn't until, oh, 11 months ago, something like that. Uh, so you're not alone. But if you don't have a smartphone and or don't have the Facebook app, can't get one, you can still post to your fan page from your mobile device. So to do this, when you're on your page, 
uh, at your desktop computer, click on the edit page button in the upper right hand corner and then you'll see this screen on the left hand side there's a sidebar click on the mobile link in that sidebar and then you'll be brought to this page and instead of a big white box that says email here you'll see an actual email address that you can send posts to save that email address as a contact in your address book and call it FB fan page or something like that. And then you can update your fan pages status from anywhere just by sending an email to that secret email address. So to send a status update via email, you just put the status update in the subject line of the email and then you leave the body of the email blank and boom, it'll change your status. You can also send photos and to do that, you just put the image in the body of the message and then your caption for that image in the subject line. Boom, done. So now let's talk about, since you've got ways that you can post to Facebook uh, via whatever mobile device you've got. So now let's talk about the sort of content that you can post to your Facebook fan page. And of course, if you're going through your daily curation workflow, I hope you are, please be doing that. It's such a huge part of being a market leader but you've got that going on. So your curation is happening and I'm just gonna assume that that's going on. But let's take a look at some of the other kinds of things that you can post and we'll use some examples from uh, both Ed and I. So here's my Facebook fan page and I've got a new podcast that I'm a part of that I uh, did an episode of with Lisa Hartwell and Allison Reynolds. So that was a, a piece that I found this morning, more of a curated piece, although it's something that I'm still that I'm participating in, but that I wanted to share with my audience. Uh, so here's one. Kauai vacation booked. What are your favorite must-sees on the island? Now, yeah, I realize it's got nothing to do with internet marketing, but you have to realize that one of the things that people look for in a market leader is to know who that person is, or even to be able, in this case, to give that person their own thoughts and their own advice. And I genuinely, I mean, you know, you can't fake this kind of thing. I genuinely did want to know what suggestions people had in this situation. I haven't been there before, and I'm sure that some folks who are my fans or followers have been and would have something really great to tell me. So I asked a question. Now, questions, of course, incite comments to your Facebook fan page. So if there is a situation where you can legitimately ask a question, and, and don't fake this, but if there is a situation where you can legitimately ask a question of your audience, then go ahead and do it because people like that opportunity to be able to answer questions. And then there's also the personal element of that. Uh, Again, when people are your fan, your follower, they're looking to you as a market leader, they do want to know a little bit more about who you are as a person. And that doesn't mean that you should turn your fan page into a 24 seven um, diary of your entire life, but it doesn't hurt. And in fact, it's more helpful than hurtful if you do include some personal things from time to time. You'll also find that because of the nature of a social networking site like Facebook, that this kind of post, something that may be a little bit more personal, is more welcome on these kinds of sites or more appropriate on these kinds of sites than it might be on a place like your blog. Uh, your blog can, of course, include some personal content now and again, but you do want to keep it fairly focused on what your niche is about. However, those people who found your site and then became your fan on Facebook or your follower on Twitter are sort of like your, your ultra fans, your uber fans. They're the people who are deeply interested in your niche and also in what you have to say about your niche. And just like there are celebrity tabloids, uh, both on TV and magazines that you can pick up that are just insanely popular, People have a thirst and an interest in knowing what people's lives are like, people that they admire. And I'm not trying to put you or myself, for that matter, on a ridiculous pedestal. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that when you allow people to know a little bit more about who you are personally, you allow them to know a little bit more about who you are as a whole. They get a better picture for you. They feel closer to you. You find that you have some commonalities and it gives you a chance to interact and engage with your audience as well on a more personal level. So 
Uh, those are my thoughts on personal updates and then let's go on. Now here's a plugin that I found that looks kind of interesting. Uh, I said I haven't tried it yet, but it looks interesting and some people found some value in that. So that's something that you can post. Here is a post. Uh, this is a picture that I took and again, this is a personal thing. It was birthday cupcakes that I got. Um, not specifically work related, but something fun to share with people. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a long story. It doesn't have to be a question. It doesn't have to be, um, something uber fantastic. I just thought that this was cool because the winner of Cupcake Wars happened to be the same shop that, that I got these cupcakes from. So it's just something to say, Hey, and again, people can identify with you a little bit more once they get to know you more. Um, test results. Uh, there's when we went to the uh, NorCal Pirate Festival, another personal type of post, a photo that I posted of one of my kids attacking an entire turkey leg. And again, it's personal. I thought it was funny um, that we even have a pirate festival in Northern California. And then we go into some more curated stuff. Here's just a thought, simple thought. When I'm typing on a real computer, I miss autocorrect. Again, not specifically internet marketing related, but my audience is obviously full of or comprised entirely of people using computers. So it's absolutely relevant and, uh, you know, people responded to that. So now let's take a look at Ed's page and see what he's got up lately. All right. He's got a picture of this, uh, this building in New York, I guess it is. And again, not internet marketing related, but he is also deeply interested in photography. And so it's relevant to him in that way. And this is one of those things that, that Ed, um, it's one of his hobbies and something that he's very passionate about. And he shares that with his audience, regardless of whether it is specific to internet marketing or not. And then he's got his own little uh, piece of wisdom here today and tomorrow shows yet again that consistency over time beats everything. And that's something to think about. That's a, that's a good comment. But just a thought. Threw it out there on Facebook. Simple, simple, simple. Next one, he asked about uh, the PR update that came out. He says, it's now live. How did you do? And he's got a ton of comments in here for that. I think that this is a really great example of asking a question to your marketplace, in this case, one that is specifically related to his marketplace, as a tool to encourage feedback on Facebook. And when your fan page gets a high high percentage of feedback based on the number of fans that it has overall, more and more users in the Facebook system will be able to see more and more of Ed's posts or your posts from your Facebook fan page. So encouraging feedback is very, very important um, to make sure that your posts are seen by all of your fans because the way that Facebook has it set up default is that your fans aren't going to see a lot of what you post um, unless you do have a high edge rank score. And that edge rank is, is partially based upon the amount of feedback that you get from your fans when you do post something. And here's another little piece of advice, wisdom, thoughts. Another one down here from Ed. Here's a video that he posted. And this is actually a video um, using an app on the iPhone of some of his children's toys running around the floor, which is, I think, why he calls it a work of staggering genius part two. There's also part one down below. Uh, but he's just y y fooling around with a new app called My Super 8 Film, I guess or super eight, uh, and playing around with the new app and then sharing that with his audience. Because one of the other things that he talks about a lot is, is mobile, Apple, iPad, iPhone kinds of stuff. And so this is of interest to his audience, even though the video itself may not quite be as much of a work of staggering genius <laughs> as, uh, as, as, as Ed claims here, but you know, people who are like, Oh, you know, uh, who have iPhones and things like that as well would probably be interested in this app. So he's sharing that with folks. He's getting comments about it. He's upping his edge rank. And all of this stuff can be done, um, like this one was done via email, can be done from your mobile device. So you don't have to be chained to your computer all day.
Now, assuming that you have set up your Facebook fan page to auto post to Twitter, like I showed you in module one, when you're doing this kind of mobile content creation on Facebook, you're also then updating your Twitter feed, keeping you in touch with that segment of your marketplace as well while you're out and about. So while I'm, um, when I'm looking to create content on the go, Facebook is the first place that I think of when I consider content distribution because it's going to automatically go to my Twitter feed, unless of course I have a longer thought or a longer piece, at which case uh, it may go somewhere else. But for just an image here and there, a thought here and there, Facebook is the first place to think of. And then again, you set it up so that it auto posts to your Twitter. So with the tools that you've gotten from this video to help you easily post to your Facebook fan page, plus your daily curation workflow, there really is no reason not to have an update to your, your Facebook fan page and thusly your Twitter account nearly every single day. There's no reason not to. It's this kind of commitment that will really differentiate you in your marketplace from the other folks in your marketplace in terms of both your readers and your fans, but also in the eyes of the search engine, you're regularly producing, you are an authority and authority matters in Google. It's just like Ed said in that Facebook fan page update that we just looked at today and tomorrow shows yet again, the consistency over time beats everything. So use Facebook's mobile content creation features to create that consistency over time so that you can beat the others in your marketplace.